Greetings chess players. My name is Chris Torres. This is Leo. Wave Leo. No, no, lean toward me. Lean toward me and wave. There he is. Um, we are here tonight for the Daily Chess Musings. Halloween Blitz Chess Extravaganza. Um, if you are watching this broadcast either on our Twitch channel or on Chess TV, you have eight minutes to join this free Blitz tournament, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, first of all, as I said, we are on Chess TV tonight. And uh, second of all, um, I will be giving away prizes. Let me explain to you how those prizes work. For playing in the tournament, you get one raffle ticket. And for each additional win, you get one raffle ticket. Um, last night we did one tournament, so some raffle tickets have already been won. And tonight we uh, um, are doing another tournament. So if you join, you get a raffle ticket. And um, every, every additional win, you get an additional raffle ticket. What do you get for your raffle tickets? Well, tonight we are going to announce some new Daily Chess Musings apparel which is uh, pretty, pretty fantastic. Some of you, maybe a couple of you have won uh, our shirts, but uh, we've got uh, uh, knit caps um, and uh, different, different apparel options. If you win the raffle, I will reach out to you and see which uh, of the apparel options fits your needs the best, meaning which one would you enjoy wearing? with our snazzy Daily Chess Musings logo. Um, so, chance to win prizes. Hey, Rode Dorado, how you doing? Chance to win prizes and um, it's free and your games can be on Chess TV. So what you want to do is join the Daily Chess Musings Club on Chess.com right now. Join the club right now, and then uh, uh, click join the five-minute Halloween Blitz Chess Extravaganza. It's the only tournament we have scheduled for tonight. You'll like the club because our club is all about is all about um, helping. It's all about chess. You're right, Leo, and it's all about helping each other to get better at chess. Um, what openings and defenses do I play? Oh, man, do I love the Halloween Gambit. Do I love the Halloween Gambit. Um, let's see, do I have enough time? I might have enough time. Let me find, uh, my favorite, uh, Halloween Gambit, uh, one of my favorite Halloween Gambit games I've ever played. I can, um, show you that right now. Let me go in my database. What a question! And I, I, you know, um, yeah, you, you ask questions, I will uh, give you answers. Let's see. Let me show you a, a quick game real fast. Um, I played this game against Hector, the famous Hector on Market Street in San Francisco back in 2012, October. And I was white. Hector used to pull out tables on Market Street in San Francisco with chess boards that you could rent for a certain amount of time. Up, oh, I got to get to my analysis board. Hang on. No wonder things aren't working. Uh, There we go. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So I was white. I played e4. Um, he played e5. Knight f3. Knight c6. Knight c3. Knight f6. Right? Four knights opening. Now, Hector is expecting probably bishop b5. But I play knight takes e5. Halloween gambit. Hector takes back. Um, and in the Halloween gambit, you gain space rather than time and force. You're gaining, careful Leo, you're gaining space. So I push the d-pawn, um, attacking the knight. He retreats the knight to g6. So already this knight's controlling d5 with it, the pawn here. Um, and my other pawn is controlling e5. My queen is controlling um, d4. And uh, 
our knights are fighting for control of e4. But now there's going to be no more fighting for control of e4. Oh, wait. Yeah, Hector doesn't retreat. I mean, he could have. He could have retreated. But Hector uh, puts a, a pin on my... On my... Uh, or not... A, yeah, he, he puts a pin to defend against the uh, the capture, and I want to get castled, so I played bishop e2, which renews the threat. Guy, did you know? <laughs> it was pinned to it. Mm-hmm. Then he retreats his knight back, because he needs to. And then here's here's a move that uh, the my friend Francisco Anchando showed me. This is a cool move. So I'm threatening to play h5, leaving this knight no place to go. And um, Hector plays h5 himself to stop that. However, however, let me show you something. Um, if, if by chance knight had taken here, then you could do this. And you're threatening the queen and c7. So the queen goes back to defend. And now the queen is defending here and here. But if you take either one, for, for instance, if you do this, then you get this, right? Um, just a little extra um, info, and how much time do I have till the tournament? Not much. I better uh, uh, hurry up and get through this very quickly. Um, develop with threats, boom, attacking the queen, queen moves up, um, and then I'm pretty sure, yeah, I attack c7 again. I'm actually threatening checkmate here, right? So then he goes here, then I want to remove that guard, the queen's uh, guarding against checkmate, but he says check, I step to the side so I'm keeping the threat alive of checkmate although he goes like this and now I got a problem what to do with my knight well I decided and this move this move isn't accurate so you can see the evaluation bar goes down but it's interesting I mean it was a blitz game um, we don't always play perfect chess but we play interesting chess or at least we try so the idea is with this pawn here I uh, his bishop has no retreat so it goes back this way and then you can do this classic trap on the bishop and queen takes and then I'm pretty sure yeah I improve the rook threaten the queen queen goes here um, I threaten the queen again with this rook and now you see the evaluation bar go way up um, queen goes there and now I take um, here which opens up a threat on his king as well as controlling the escape square c7 for his queen his knight comes out of course I play check um, king goes to f8, and then I play c5, sealing this queen's fate. Now this queen, look, she can't escape this way or this way, right? I mean, she's in deep, deep danger. He doesn't see it. Boom! Attack the queen, and then, boom! Trap the queen. Um, beautiful, 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 uh... Halloween Gambit, if I do say so myself, played against Hector on Market Street. And I'm not sure if Hector is still around with us. Um, he was an interesting character in San Francisco chess history. And this was played in October 2012. Now let me get to my tournament, because that's why we are here tonight. And we still have six seconds. I did it in time, Real Road Dorado. I did it in time. We have 14 players, and we are starting right now. Let me look at the games as we go. All right. So let's look at, uh, uh, let's start with uh, Kaura Renai. He won last night. Let's see what's happening. So we've got a, a, a Karakan uh, from him again. I like to call it the Karakant, because I have my way with it. Um, advanced variation. c6, bishop d3. Um, it is not possible to join the tournament late. I do not think so, unfortunately. Um, but you can you can hang out with us. And you can still join the Daily Chess Musings Club. All right, so let me make sure my broadcast looks good. And it does. It's always good to make sure it looks, looks good. Um, and now where do my chess.com? There, there's my chess.com screen. All right, so let's let's look at um, what I missed while I was checking my screen out. All right, so both sides are get uh, white's castled, black gets there. Not, this is an interesting move by Kaur Inare, because um, now I mean it's going to be hard for him to castle, so he 
fixes that by going knight g6, then bishop e7, bishop e3. We're, oh, looks like he's trading his c-pawn off. White should take back with their d-pawn. Um, black castles, knight c3. Ooh, knight b4. Um, threatening the uh, bishop. And take, take. White no longer has a bishop here. But this does take a lot of tempo for black to, you know, a lot of moves with that knight to, to just trade for another $3 piece. And let's see. Is white going to, is, is white, yeah, white's going to um, take black's bishop pair away by doing the other trade. Um, so now white has two knights, uh, black has a bishop and a knight, but that's better than black having the bishop pair for, for this kind of end game. Knight h4, so the knight's uh, moving closer to the opposing king, and Kaurinare says, enough of that, enough of that, go, ooh, go away, we're seeing some spicy chess here, right from the get-go. Alright, so maybe, I, you know, I was actually thinking he might play f4 here, he might push the queen one more time, but he's threatening b2, which is also good. And put the queen on the same diagonal as the king. So this queen is really nicely placed right now. And then he goes the uh, g4 route. Knight goes all the way back to e1. Queen takes on d4. Check. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, all the... Uh, Road Dorado asks if um, I check for anything uh, suspicious. Uh, you know, of course. And uh, all the people in our tournaments are uh, club members. Um, let me go to another game. Let's see. Let's look here. Smartfield and uh, Baby Yoda. Let's see. Ooh, we had a Scotch Gambit. Let's let's take a look at how this um, happened. So the Scotch Gambit, uh, at, you know, and this is a, um, a two knights defense to the Italian, and then transposes to a Scotch um, Gambit right here. Um, many many scholastic players should be uh, familiar familiar with these lines. Although I don't, yeah, tend to go this route. Let me. Let me go back in time and show you something slightly better. Slightly better. Um, yes, Leo. Um, so, you know, when white plays uh, e5, uh, you know, wh what you want to do here is play black uh, pawn to d5 would be, you know, would be a better option because you, you start getting out here where um, one knight's defending another and this knight is already a target and you're you're gonna lose some material. Here's a pin. And now f4 I'm suspecting is played. Nope, queen takes d4 that, oh, well we just missed the end of the game. But I'll um, play through the moves real fast here. Okay, so here's here's the problem with, with this kind of design, right? So if this goes here, I believe uh, white can just play f4 right now. Oh, wait, wait, no, no, rook e1 first. What am I saying? Rook e1, then f4. So he gets the rook e1 right, but he misses f4. He takes a pawn instead of uh, scooting uh, his pawn forward to attack the, the, the pin knight, which cannot move. And let's see what, what happened here. Attacking this bishop twice. Bishop moves, threatening b2. Maybe he could get some material back. c3, um, that certainly fixes that problem. Now white's rooks are unified. They're getting all their pieces in the game. And they're up material. Um, let's see what uh, what ends up happening here. Interesting. So, I mean, uh, uh, black is has gotten themselves a, a reasonably good position considering um, how how uh, poorly the early going went for them. Um, and now maybe you might see like a, a queen g4 move here, right? Um, putting the queen in the same file as your opponent's king while simultaneously attacking f4. Let's see what they do. 
h6 uh, misses the mark but it's it's okay let's see what white responds with queen d4 um, very active spot for the queen has a uh, potential uh, uh, power check but there's also a problem here you could defend this this kind of power check move with bishop c6 which um, influences the square right in front of the king does not though see very much exposing exposing the uh, the king so queen in, oh and queen did not go to a8 i figured queen a8 check for sure see a moment ago yeah that bishop c6 move would have would have stopped that and it was open for business and then black uh should should definitely trade here mess up white's pawn structure get rid of the threats <clears throat> ah and then uh, just just hung a queen that's a shame but it you know it happens in blitz right happens all the time let's uh get back to the tournament see what we're doing here with our games we've still got a couple uh thundering cavern versus rohan feb let's take a look Ooh, and we got ourselves a uh rook and pawn end game times two two rooks on each side interesting very very even right now um all the black's pawns are isolated though um so in, in these kinds of situations obviously you want to get your uh, rooks coordinated maybe uh, get your king you know close to the min uh hmm, moving the wrong way with the king you 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 want your kings to be active you want your rooks to be coordinated um rook goes out all right, check. Ooh, oh no. I see why he was moving down there with his king. Hang on. Hang on. This is this is a fancy uh, uh, checkmate. I didn't even catch it right off the bat, the potential for it. I was thinking uh, pure endgame strategy. But this is a rook roller checkmate. Wow. Now, it would have worked still with the king e3 move, right? Same idea, and then you can roll your rooks. But the king e1... Um, this gave uh, Black a little bit of hope to try and do this, but they won't get a chance to. Checkmate. Very nicely um, done. Thundering Calvin. And uh, saying uh, I'll play with you a, a little bit later right now, we are doing a, a broadcast of our tournament. We are still in round one of five. 17 players. So maybe... Maybe it is possible to join late, because I don't think... Okay, so it looks like we're going to be moving to round two. I've never been, you know... Um, it might be possible to still join. All right, let's see. Uh, let's look at Chess Master GS versus Just Elliot. 61970. So we're getting a, a start with an English... So it's using a non-center pawn to control a center square. Let's see if Just Elliot goes like with the, you know your your kind of e5 move where you know it's 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 almost like a reverse Sicilian sometimes. Or he could go symmetrical with c or he could just play d6. Interesting. So white is controlling uh, d5. Black is controlling e5 and d4 white gets a bishop out there they really got a, a lot of control on uh, d5 we're always looking at these four center squares right in the opening um and uh there there's two schools of thought you can occupy one of those four center squares and control one um uh, with you know upward diagonal kitty corner from it with your pawn or see so for instance this d5 pawn is controlling e4 right or you can try and control it uh, from afar with like bishops and knights and that's the difference uh, between uh, classical and hypermodern hypermodern thoughts Hmm. 
Oh. Yeah, missed. Missed that this knight was defending uh, h2 as well. And uh, ga gave up right then. Uh, that, yeah. Uh, knights go backwards. Um, pieces move forward and backwards. Um, sometimes we forget that, especially with like bishops on a long diagonal coming back. If your bishop's on the opponent's side of the board, sometimes. Uh, Let's look at Dark Soul versus Rohan Feb. Let's see what's happening here. This is a very Queen's Gambit-like uh, pawn structure. And in fact, it was a uh, Queen's Gambit. I just peeked at the, uh, the moves. This bishop's just miserable right now. It's, it's, it, it, it can't do anything. Um, but but uh, white can grab a free knight, right? Let's see if Dark Soul grabs the free knight. Nope. So Rohan Feb has an opportunity to move his knight to safety or defend it. That would have been interesting, having a white take a material advantage, but not actually a force advantage. They would be ahead of material, but not force, because their bishop was blocked. Okay. Threatening a uh, a fork there, but it, it, you know that, and and this can help unleash this pawn down here because now this uh, the d4 pawn can move forward. Um, rook takes, rook takes, queen takes. And now, again, a free knight. There's two attackers on the knight, on, and he sees it this time. I might have actually went with the queen takes. Would that have been a mistake? Uh, I don't think so. Now, all you got to do is uh, scoot, scoot this pawn forward, and your bishop is then a useful piece again. I enjoy uh, chess at all levels. Um, in fact, I'm the uh, scholastic coordinator for uh, Cal Chess, so I see a lot of uh, scholastic chess um, being being played, and it's very exciting. As I said in last night's uh, broadcast, uh, yeah, the chess in the uh, kindergarten first grade section, whoa, that is some exciting, exciting chess. Anybody see the uh, Fisher Random uh, World Championship that was played earlier today? That was also exciting chess. Um, I enjoy I enjoy chess of all all levels. Um, many times people just focus on the world champions when they're like looking at the uh, the uh, old games. I actually, you know, on any uh, given game. A, uh, a strong uh, tournament player can play like a world champion. Maybe they'll play the best game of their life, their own immortal game. And I love to try and find those deep in the, hidden in the databases, little database treasures. Yes, that Armageddon was crazy, Uncle Kev Dog. Congratulations to Nakamura. Yep, I agree about that uh, uh, draw by agreement on the game before the Armageddon. Uh, and I believe uh, Jan Nepanishi is now... Uh, um, he finished second, what, in the Fisher Random World Championship? Second in the Classical World Championship. And second in the Rapid World Championship. The cream is in a nice pie. It is. The, uh, and my son says the queen and rook are in a nice file. He's absolutely correct. They're nicely coordinated, and uh, <clears throat> the um, yeah, it's it's quite a uh, it's quite an accomplishment for Jan Nepunishi, even though he's not a world championship. I mean, there's that that saying about people don't forget people forget who uh, finishes second. However, finishing second in three different uh, world championship chess formats. 
is uh, is pretty amazing. And he got a little sweet revenge against Magnus in that Fisher Random. You can uh, check out some of the uh, lessons I did on um, Magnus and uh, Jan Nepomniši, um, the chess games from the World Championship, as well as a little bit of their history. Some of their games from when they were scholastic youth chess players. Uh, black. Whoa! If rook takes, uh, rook goes down to e1, and there's a fork, and black's getting back into this. White still has the edge, but um, in, in a rook and pawn endgame, now we're, we're looking for a, a scope of the rooks. Rooks belong behind past pawns, regardless of whose they are. And your kings want to uh, get very active. So let's see. So far, we're just seeing pawn moves. Okay, black is uh, getting their king to a more active, active location. Let's see what white's, white's thinking here. If, if the white rook, oh, see, I think this might be a mistake because now you're going to lose this with check. Yeah, it was a tempting mistake, right? Rook and pawn endgames uh, should not scare you, Arcane Doctrine. In fact, uh, um, very soon, like uh, uh, this year, before the end of the year, I'm doing a whole series of videos on Rook and pawn endgames. They are already in the editing process, so look forward to that. The strategies are, you know, um, relatively simple. Like I said, rooks belong behind pass pawns, regardless of whose they are. Kings need to be active. Dad. And it looks like we're going to see a check. Dad. Oh, we uh, missed a checkmate there, but there will be right there. Exciting, Dad. exciting finish. But let me go back just a couple moves here. Uh, let's see, what, what did I... So right here, right here, the rook should have gone back to a8 because it would defend here and can uh, and can um, either go to f8 or get behind the pass pawn here. And uh, um, black would have been fine. Um, so that was that was a, a, a key key mistake right at the end there, uh, Rohan. Um, something for you to work on. Let's go. Let's look at some more games. Um, Kunjuan versus Chess Master GS. Ooh. So we, uh, it looks like we are seeing a uh, um, again a uh, English, but it's turn. It's it's like a um, Queen's Indian approach, um, and uh, so it's it's a, a modern defense, I believe, is what what we call this. Oops. Um, I skipped ahead too many moves. Hang on. Sorry for the bouncing around. So white, uh, here, here we go with classical versus hyper modern, right? So the bishop um, is influencing the center from afar while white is taking it um, right away. And then black thrusts to the center. And they get this little bit of extra space and it's locked up. So advantage to white. Whenever um, the pawns are locked and you have like a c4, um, d5, e4, you, you have that extra space um, and everything's locked like that, advantage to white. Um, okay, uh, putting the question to the bishop, bishop retreats, uh, black's knight improves, let's see. Bishop takes knight, really? I don't know that I would have uh, been been happy to get rid of my bishop pair so early. I mean, maybe you know, queen queen to c2 um, puts the queen on a nice uh, semi-open file and defending e4, and then you can castle. Um, no need to get rid of your bishop pair. And let's let's not forget that uh, black is castled here, white is not. So white is playing. Um, with fire here because if if they mess up um, but 
and, and allow allow a, a threat down the middle. And now there's a threat on c3, right? Uh, and white takes care of that threat right out of the way. Um, now they're safe. White white's safe. And black, black can um, literally play e5, right? Or uh, or you know they could do like the Paul Morphy move, which would be uh, Paul Morphy likes to uh, touch all his pieces early. You know, like the rook a to e1 would also be a a good choice. Um, e5 is played. It was a little, you know, so it's like a Capablanca move would be e5. A Paul Morphy move would be rook a to e1. Kappa like keeping uh, uh, keeping things simple, and uh, you know, if 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 Kappa could dominate both uh, center squares on his opponent's side of the board, he certainly would have. Paul Morphy would have said, you know what, I haven't touched this rook on a one yet. I I want to touch it. G4. Uh, that is not a Kappa like move though. It's a strong move. Um, Wait, wait, wait. Maybe it is a Kappa-like move, because that traps the queen. That, it, Yeah, I take that back. That is a very Kappa-like move, because uh, black's queen is, is trapped. Beautiful. Beautiful stuff. White's dominating the center, and now threatening to expose. Yep, and uh, um, looks like there is a, a, a resignation. Let's uh, switch to another game. I want to try and give a lot of people... AFX 2012 versus Pucci 1. Let's see what's happening here. Give a lot of people uh, a chance to shine on the big screen. On the big board. This knight needs to get in play real soon. No, I mean, this pawn is free, but... I, um, it, you know, it, it bugs me that, that white's rooks aren't unified yet and black's are. White has a center pawn, black does not. Really, this could go any any way at this point. And, uh, you know, both these players are pretty good. I've seen them both play. Let's see what white decides. Nothing as of yet. Should they uh, unify their rooks, or should they just take this pawn and threaten a rook? I think you can get away with taking it and threatening the rook, because you are threatening the rook, and the rook, coming back threatening your bishop, um, this pawn is defended by the c3 pawn, so it's, it's not like it's pinned or anything. Um, and now, you probably got to be a little careful here, <clears throat> putting the bishop back on the same diagonal as the queen. Ooh, and now, wait, wait, you can't play g4, obviously. Um, you would like to. This. Let's see, you can't play... Uh, what about... Uh, okay, they're playing... You know, it's hard to commentate on, uh, on uh, Blitz games for, for obvious reasons. The action happens so fast, You and, and then you're trying to talk. You know, I really like getting this knight involved, though, because it would defend this bishop, so the queen doesn't have to. Queen would be free to, to move, and then your rooks are unified. Um, <clears throat> Rook takes back there. Um, now, All right, so there, there's a couple moves here. Queen takes f4, yeah. I was also looking at knight d4 as a possibility there. Um, ooh, and then h2. I, I'm starting to really like uh, white's position more. But it's still, like I said, anybody's anybody's game. Probably just queen takes e5 here, if you're black. How did we get here? Let me... I'm going to go back. All right, so we have uh, Italian game two nights. Uh, uh, try for the, you know, the uh, regular two nights, kind of fried liver style. D5 is the way to go. 
And then, ooh, are we going to see a Fritz variation? Francisco would love this, my good friend Francisco on Shondo. This is how he plays it. And now black can play b5 here, right? It does not. Okay. So this is the uh, famous Fritz Ulfsted variation, and you're supposed to return the threat with b5. Uh, Bobby Fischer lost a game against uh, Mr. Berger. You can find the game. Uh, and, and it started like this. Oops. It didn't start like that. <laughs> that was funny. As, as soon as I said it starts like this, um, the screen bounces. But you can find that Fisher Burger game uh, on the Daily Chess Musings website. It's what, it, you know, um, I especially like to show that everybody is, is human and chess can be humbling for everybody. Um, so there are plenty of games where chess humbles even the greatest chess players on dailychessmusings.com. But the Fisher Burger, Fritz variation, plus, plus uh, you can look at some of my uh, Francisco Fridays to see more on the Fritz variation as well. I mean, uh, totally you could, you could learn to play that sharp variation by just uh, looking at a few things on um, dailychessmusings.com. Use the search bar on dailychessmusings.com. Search for Fritz Variation or search for Fisher Burger. Spelled like the food, B-U-R-G-E-R. -E Fisher Burger, San Francisco. Boy, uh, Black's gotten a, 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 nice, a nice advantage in this uh, swashbuckling game. And a white... White throws in the towel. Let us look at some more action. As much action as I can fit into the broadcast, I will. Um, uh, Baby Yoda versus Dark Soul. Last game of the round. Three seconds. Talk about action. Oh, I love this. All right, so Black is up a full rook. But only has a couple seconds. And smart move by White. Smart move by White. When, uh, uh, Baby Yoda, very smart to go um, to the side where Black's pawns interfered with a rook roller. Very smart. Yeah, I know. It was Baby Yoda versus Dark Soul. You like Baby Yoda, Leo? Yeah. Yeah. Who doesn't like Baby Yoda? And... Uh, Let's see. Uh, oh, you know, uh, if you're if you're watching me, go ahead. Uh, give me, you know, give me a follow on on Twitch. Um, much uh, and uh, find us on, uh, like I said, dailychessmusings.com, Daily Chess Musings Club on chess.com, and uh, um, Daily Chess Musings on YouTube. You start there and uh, expand outwards. Let's see. We are in round four of five now. Kaurinare versus Kunj. Oh, this game is going to be exciting. I can't wait, Damn. Okay. You can go play. You can go play your video games. It's fine. Let's see. So we've got ourselves a Queen's Gambit uh, Semi Slav. Uh, semi Slav. Oh, but not the way this plays. All right. So, uh, uh, and see, A4 stops this early B5. Black was hoping in this line to get B5 played to get. Um, those pawns defending each other and try and hang on to the extra material. There's two ways of going about it. Um, the other way of playing kind of the Slav is... Uh, um, the other way of uh, playing the Slav, it, it kind of resembles more of a London. Not this way. This is the very theoretical way. So we've got Kaurinare versus Kunj. This is... Uh, and uh, Kaurinare won last night. He, he is Blitz Wizard 94. He is also a streamer. And he is in high school. Last night I said he had graduated. Nope, he's still got a year left even. So he's younger than I thought. So that's exciting. So... BXC3 and CXD5 hanging on to this extra extra material plus 
Black has a um, passed pawn, outside passed pawn, very dangerous. Um, white's going to have to be very careful, and white's bishops are troubled, um, very troubled indeed, because now this bishop can't move without this being weak, and uh, the e3 is blocking this bishop. Something went very wrong for uh, Carinare in the um, in the opening here. Uh, Karinare is a very good chess player. We can all make mistakes in the uh, blitz chess. So, yeah, don't, uh, don't make disparaging remarks um, about any of the players. We are a very positive group, Daily Chess Musings. We are not a trash-talking bunch. I believe chess is a, a, a game that should be held in high esteem. And uh, as such, we have a, uh, a higher code of ethics than other, uh, other chess players. How do you get your pieces in the game? Rookie one, um, threatening e4. What, what are you going to do? Uh, take with the g-pawn or take with the knight or take with the queen here? It's not an easy choice. Black's getting a better endgame out of this, but white's getting more control of the center right now. Now, where does the black queen go? Stays on this big diagonal, but she's undefended there. She is not supported, so... Um, if you're white, maybe bishop a3 looks pretty tasty. It develops with a threat, um, and then finally your bishop comes to life. Although, now with the e-pawn played, you don't have to go that route anymore. Bishop g5 is what uh, Brian chooses. Blacks, rooks are unified. This is a this is a good battle. We are seeing. I'll probably take a closer look at this particular game uh, on the Daily Chess Musings blog because uh, we uh, we missed some of the. Uh, the uh, um, uh, there's a little too much uh, detail and in, in, uh, rapid play to uh, cover that detail. Interesting, uh, interesting flex. Um, this gives black um, good control of these uh, light squares, which could be problematic. I can see this knight totally coming, totally coming here. Uh, but yeah, there it goes. Um, and Black's uh, light squared control plus their pass pawn is very problematic. Very problematic. Now you want to use this rook if you're black, because it doesn't it doesn't need to be uh, defending this pawn, and it can't use the elevator um, because of White's advanced pawn. So I think uh, uh, Kunj missed an opportunity there. Maybe rook to c8 would have been the better play. Because if you had played rook c8 um, first, then you can start advancing this pawn safely. Because it, it, it pass, like I said, rooks belong behind. There you go. Rooks belong behind the pass pawns. Hello, Ishan. How are you doing? Glad to have you uh, watching tonight. And uh, it's your first time chatting. Ah, Ishan says he is Baby Yoda. All right, good to know. That's that's awesome. So now I know. Now I'm connecting the dots. I connect the dots on a lot of players. Um, uh, you know, for for privacy reasons, I don't uh, mention their names. But many of the players we're watching tonight are uh, are students of mine. Wow, very powerful. This pawn is one square away, queen e2. Black is in uh, is in some trouble here for sure. Uh, 
I, I'm sorry, white's in trouble, but this b5 move, um, very nice attempt um, to get to get back into it, but uh, yeah, the queen uh, coming down to e1 with the check. This is, yeah, and that, uh, yep. Let's see, um, I'm, I'm curious how the game started, because we missed the first uh, several moves. Let me just peek real fast. Uh, so Queen's Gambit declines, Slav, and then uh, we get into this. Um, A4 was meant to prevent B5. B5's played anyways. Um, Bishop takes gets rid of C3, which means uh, uh, B5 wasn't supported anymore, and so black ends up with this, uh, with this pass pawn. And the real, you know, some of the trouble for um, for white, um, maybe this even starts some of the trouble. Uh, maybe instead of moving the knight to e5 right away, you you gotta you know get get your bishop into play faster, and the other bishop into play too. The knight e5 actually meant this bishop couldn't move out. Because after the Fianchetto, then G2 was pinned, right? So, yeah, I think it was. Um, this was very nice, but black has this uh, dangerous, dangerous pass pawn. White takes control of the center. Um, the bishop G5, another interesting choice. I was thinking maybe the bishop wanted to come out. Um, to this diagonal, um, to the uh, a three f eight diagonal. And that f six move was was very, very nice. And then um, we're gonna see some now the e five push. This was another moment of question. I don't think you want to play e five because we we saw um, how that. Flex undermined uh, your control of uh, light squares and, and just basically gave a big diagonal um, to, uh, to black. And um, moving the rook up there is kind of all in in the A file. And black's position um, is uh, just better with the runaway C pawn. Very interesting game, though. I'll, I'll, I'll look at it in more detail. Um, all right. Let us take a look at what else is happening in the tournament. Uh, we just saw... Uh, let's, let's look at Baby Yoda. Um, see what he's up to. He just came in and said hi in the chat. So we've got ourselves a Sicilian and the, you know the kind of the uh, Rosalimo um, instead of the d4. And then uh, c3 into the into the Rosalimo certainly fits. Um, white trades their uh, bishop for the knight which uh, creates a weak pawn over here but then they don't have a bishop pair anymore. Gives them more momentary control over the center, though. And black strikes back at the center. And right here, should we should we trade? Um, because if if we trade pawns, yes, Leo. I have I if we trade pawns, it just leaves us with an isolated queen's pawn um, that's already stuck where black's bishop is targeting it. So I I think right there. Your best bet is to play e5. Um, take, 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 take. And now I'm starting to like black's, uh, black's position. Because this, this pawn is just going to be um, stuck being defended by pieces for, for all eternity. <clears throat> pawn to a5, trying to weaponize the isolated pawn. Instead, I would recommend uh, definitely you know get your pieces into the game. 
queen a5 followed by bishop a6 um, which would you know uh, skewer the uh, queen to the rook so queen a5 looks like a, a just a regular developing piece uh, move but it actually has a nice threat okay so a5 also i i see so pawn a5 has the same threat and uh, and uh, um, white missed it so there's the uh, skewer And now if bishop takes, uh, pawn takes, and that's a discovered attack on the queen. Bishop takes, pawn takes. Queen moves, though. Sets up to trade. And that looks like it hangs a queen. Um, hard to recover from those. Yeah, hard to recover from, from those. <clears throat> okay. Let us, uh, nice, nice game, both of you. And uh, Chess Master, uh, GS, you are having a, a fantastic evening tonight. Thanks for playing, Baby Yoda. Let us see. Uh, Sophia Fifi in uh, Kaurinare. Um, and again from uh, Karanare, the his his famous Karakan. He's very effective with it. Maybe he's going to end up being a uh, Anatoly Karpov. He's he's certainly very talented to be in high school, and uh, I've watched his rating uh, grow um, from like sixteen to twenty two um, on here, sixteen hundred to twenty two hundred, just in the last uh, couple of years. And it has been steady progress with, with a lot of work on his part. Uh, <clears throat> so, and again, he is Blitz Wizard uh, 94. He streams. And that's, uh, I see some chat happening. It's good that you're uh, teaching your uh, nine-year-old niece. Uh, most of my, all of my uh, nephews and uh, nieces uh, know how to play chess. Um, in fact, I just went on a nice excursion with some of the older ones who are in college now. I used to take them to my chess camps um, for a week at a time. Uh, when they were in elementary school, now they're in college. And uh, we went on a uh, chess vacation to San Francisco recently for a tournament I was running there. It was a lot of fun. And uh, Omar, Omari, uh, I'd love to play right now. I'm focusing on the Blitz Halloween Blitz Extravaganza. Uh, the prizes are going to be um, new lines of daily chess musings apparel and I will give you some options so you might you might choose a t-shirt you might choose a, a, a knitted cap you might choose a ball cap different uh, official daily chess musings apparel and then you can uh, sport that when you play in tournaments send me a photo um, of you uh, playing chess wearing our apparel and I will post it on dailychessmusings.com in the blog. So it certainly looks like uh, Karanare is going to uh, uh, bounce right back. And strong players do. Let me uh, switch to another game. This one looks like... Uh, it's well in hand. Oh, it, this is the last game of round five of five, so we'll just stay right here. As soon as this game is done, our tournament for the evening is done, and we're going to do the raffle. So don't go anywhere. Um, the way it works is if you played in the tournament, you got a raffle ticket, and if you won games, you got a raffle ticket. Megan, call my wife to uh, come help with the raffle. It's almost raffle time. I'm waiting for the results to show. Okay, I can't great. See the tournament anymore. All right, great, great. Yeah, it's, I'm saying it's the final game of round five. She's okay. just 
waiting for the final results to post and then uh, we use a, a random number generator and then uh, we'll reach out to the uh, winners via uh, messaging inside uh, chess.com I hope you enjoyed the uh, Halloween Blitz Chess Extravaganzas. Once again, my name is Chris Torres. I run daily chess musings. Um, I've been blogging. Uh, I had a blog on chessmusings.wordpress.com um, that I started like, you know, 14, 15 years ago. And uh, during the pandemic, I decided to, uh, to uh, make it bigger because uh, we, we were all in lockdown. I wanted to uh, really use the power of the chess community to, uh, to um, in, in a positive way. And uh, Kunj, congratulations, you won. Smart Field also tied for first. Very good. Very good. Um, and I know who Smart Field is. Uh, um, she is a, a student of mine, and I'm very pleased with her performance and uh, Chessmaster uh, GS, so very, very nice. Um, <laughs> tie breaks are sad, laugh out loud. Uh, yeah, but you know, it, it's, it's a way of uh, uh, finishing, finishing, um, uh, coming up with uh, uh, winners and such. And uh, we should have the results for the uh, raffle very soon, so don't go anywhere. Uh, <clears throat> Um, in fact, uh, while we're waiting for the raffle results, I started with a Halloween Gambit game. Um, I'll show you another Halloween Gambit game because it is, uh, it's, it's on the eve of Halloween. So if you watched the beginning of the broadcast, I showed you a Halloween game that I played on uh, Market Street in San Francisco. And, uh, let's see. Let me go to analysis. And analysis. And in fact, I'm going to find one on my uh, Daily Chess Musings uh, blog to show you guys. I'll just type in Halloween Gambit and see what comes up. Um, DailyChessMusings.com. I'm going there right now. And I need to be specific because I run these Halloween tournaments too. So let me search for Halloween gambit and see what I find let's see let's see what I find while I'm waiting for the results of our here it is happy Halloween gambit um, you can find this lesson on dailychessmusings.com <clears throat> and uh, let's see so uh, e4 um, I was playing a simul it looks like in Cupertino California Home of Apple computers, by the way. Um, on uh, uh, October 31st, Halloween Day itself, 2008, against a very, very talented, brilliant student. His name was uh, Lung Shi, um, and uh, he ended up uh, graduating, I think, from MIT and Caltech. Um, and uh, uh, let's see how it goes. So this was a simul I was playing against uh, my advanced students on Halloween. And to keep Lung Shi entertained, I played into the Halloween Gambit. Um, and he took back. And of course, again, this is a Gambit where you control space. You control the center rather than um, like the Danish Gambit where you develop pieces very rapidly or the King's Gambit. Um, Halloween Gambit's a, di a different kind of gambit. And instead of knight g6, if you want to know what happens with knight g6, go back to the beginning of the video. Um, I showed a, a, a brief game there, but knight c6, all right. So yeah, against knight g6, I expanded to e5. Against knight c6, I play d5, because then when the knight goes to e5, why then? Then we can play f4. And again, we're taking big time control of the center. Now, when your opponent in, in, in a Halloween Gambit, when your opponent um, ends up with this type of knight formation, and it happens fairly frequently, um, you don't play h3, because it, you know, it's, it, you can drive the knight away, sure, whatever. No, no. 
Um, remember, this knight is already attacked and only being defended by this knight. So you play e5. And then you're going to get some material back. Um, Lungxi uh, does not waste time. He plays uh, bishop c5, threatening the belly button. That's right, I call it the belly button. I'm the inventor of that term for f2, f7. So if you like that vernacular, uh, I was the original creator of it many, many years ago. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, that's a little threatening, but watch. We take the knight, of course, and uh, bishop f2 is better than knight f2 because it, it grabs the initiative for Lungxi and he plays it. My king steps up right into this open space. If you don't like adventurous chess, you don't play the Halloween Gambit, right? Um, so much for king safety, right? And now he goes bishop b6 with the idea of knight f2, which is a nice uh, fork on the queen and rook. However, uh, fx g7 is a nice threat of taking a rook and promoting to a queen. So rook g8. And then um, I played, uh, you know, and I, I say here in my, in my blog notes, the best known method of slaying the vampire is to drive a wooden stake through its heart. So I drive the wooden stake straight through its heart, which gives my pieces access now to d5. My knight has access, my queen has access to go to the d5 square. Sometimes we do that. Sometimes we'll move a pawn forward so our pieces can go there. But also, um, that pawn is momentarily controlling the square in front of the opponent's king. So uh, it creates, it creates you know, a little bit of uh, trouble for Lung Xi, and he makes a little mistake here. He plays uh, queen h4, which certainly threatens f2 three times, but it loses time because g3, queen f6, right? And then I drive it back. And then uh, king to f3. Uh, what am I doing? I want to um, get my rook or queen into the e-file, right? But um, I would need to get my king out of the way. Hey, Blitz Wizard. Uh, very, very nice job. Thank you for playing in both tournaments, my friend. Always a pleasure to watch your chess. Um, so king goes, let's see, king f3. Uh, they t uh, Lungxi takes the pawn, and now here comes, the, uh, you know, I, I get to play bishop h3, which threatens us twice, and in the time it takes him to defend it, then I have, uh, um, I can play uh, rook e1 free of charge. No tempo required. So rook e1, um, and then let's see, Lungxi plays king to d8. Um, so this king actually can't move anywhere right now. Knight e4, threatening, threatening the queen, moving my knight closer. Knights are close range attackers. Queen g6. We'll see how many Halloween Gambit games I can show you in the little bit of time I got. Uh, pawn to c4. This is a nice move. Threatening, obviously, to go up to uh, c5, um, which would, you know, further further support. Uh, you know my, my pawns and I don't want to give I don't want to give away what yeah so stop there Chris otherwise you're gonna give away uh, the uh, end of the game maybe uh, black plays f5 and this knight should is being dislodged but can move closer and now is actually um, if it wasn't for these two pieces is actually threatening check mate yes Megan how many are we doing uh, we'll do uh, why don't we uh, do five prizes? Okay. Five prizes. Um, but, you know, black has two guards. If it was just one guard, I would work on removing removing one of these two guards. But black has two guards, so it's a little tricky. But Lungxi removes one of his guards for me. His idea, I guess, is to come over here and, and try and fight for control of the e-file. Um, and then uh, I think somebody said, yeah, uh, Hell's way she waits for me says uh, queen d5. Absolutely. This is why I scooted that pawn forward, right? To give my pieces access to d5, either the knight or the queen. Um, so then uh, rook goes to f8. Now, the reason rook f8 is because I was actually threatening the check um, again, and then the queen would have to take. But now the rook's defending it as well. Black has two defenders on f7. I have two attackers. Um, but 
what do we play? Hello, Smartfield. Very nice uh, game tonight. I'm not going to use your real name, but very nice performance in the tournament. You did great. Uh, what do you think I play here as white? Any Anybody want to shout it out in chat? Look at your checks, captures, and threats. We got ourselves a nice finish. Now I see why I posted this one in my blog. This is a beautiful game, especially for a simul. Yes, might even be a checkmate. Anybody see it? Anybody want to take a guess what white should play? Look at your checks, captures, and threats. If you look at them in that order, you might spot the... Nope, not, uh, not knight f7. I got even better. Even better, I would say. Watch this. I'll, I'll give you another moment or two. I'll wait for uh, my wife to come with the uh, raffle winners. I played dxc7 check. All right, so if uh, bishop takes, then I have knight e6 check. And that's big time, big time problem. Um, but king takes. Then I play what? c5. Very good. c5. Bishop goes away. Important to play c5. You'll see why in a moment. What's the move now? Maybe you see it. Nope, not pawn b4. You got c5 right. Knight e6. Very good, Ishan. Boom! Knight e6, check. And then uh, dx e6. And then, of course, queen d6, check, mate. Fun, fun stuff. I could find more Halloween Gambit games, too. Um, but, you, you know, um, it's worth pointing out. I started the show with the Halloween Gambit, and then in this... Sh uh, let me get to a good point here. Uh, just let's let's look at the um, control of the center you get for the cost of two points in material. It's very very powerful stuff. Um, I you know I I think maybe I said it before. Most of you probably know this. I am a, a correspondence uh, chess master. And uh, this this opening is not not uh, um, it's not a bad opening. The Halloween Gambit is 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 a, a very playable, especially over the board. Um, let us. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, let's see. Learn. I'll show you one more. Why I'm waiting for the results of the raffle tonight. <clears throat> Let me find another Halloween Gambit game for you. We are on the eve of Halloween. Let me see. My name is Chris Torres. This is Daily Chess Musings. Thanks for coming and watching our Halloween Blitz Chess Extravaganza. Going into my secret, secret. Ah, well, you know what? Here, uh, we could look at this one against Luke. I'm not going to use his last name, but I know who he is. Um, he played on my uh, national championship team from Mission San Jose. And this game is from 2011. Um, let's see what happens. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've looked at these. <clears throat> So we got ourselves a four knights again. It's easy to get a four knights if you're white, and then your opponent's thinking that it's going to be a, a you know a rather casual affair, and then boom, all of a sudden, um, Halloween Gambit time. Now Luke was a sharp player, um, very sharp player. He helped us win uh, a couple national championships, USCF Super Nationals and such. Lots of state championships. He plays bishop b4, pinning this knight. So when I take this knight, then his knight can take on e4. This is this is good stuff. My uh, friend uh, Eric Schiller, who has uh, passed away, used to recommend this. 
used to recommend this line. So I knew about it when I played Luke. Um, and so this is this is dangerous, right? Two attackers on the on the pin piece, but these aren't defended, and this isn't defended. So I brought my queen out to g4, targeting all three. Black plays a d5, and then uh, um, queen takes g7, threatening the rook, easy enough to defend. And then I do, this is like an elephant gambit idea. Usually you play, elephant gambit is black, you get into a situation like this. Um, I'm putting, you know, a lot of pressure on f8, but uh, Luke's bishop is very annoying. Very, very, look at that. Look how annoying that is. It's the perfect attacking piece and the perfect defending piece. So knight takes c3. And now I don't take like this because I'd be walking into the fork, and I don't want to walk into the fork. Again, this is the perfect uh, attacking and defending piece. So a3. Uh, very soon, Panda Pooch. Very soon. My wife is working on that in the other room. And we will let you know who wins. And uh, we're going to give you a couple different choices of apparel. Hats, shirts, um, knitted caps. The new line of Daily Chess Musings apparel. All right. So the bishop still needs to defend c5. Everybody would agree. So it goes there. And then I take here. My pawn structure is uh, is weak. Luke is a good attacking chess player. Now he's threatening my belly button. That's trouble. I block, and then now there's more trouble. Wow. Wow. And then uh, I wonder if I lose this game. We're going to find out. Uh, king to d2. Oh. Oh. And I think I see what happens. Uh, what do you what do you guys think black should play here? Should they take the rook? Or should they play pawn d4? Or something else? What should black do is what I'm asking you. Uh, Luke uh, played top five. Uh, but it's it's done by uh, Ishan. It's not done by place in the tournament. People get raffle tickets for playing in the tournament and for each additional win. So we do it by a raffle. In this way, um, it's it's not always the the players with the highest ratings who win the prizes. They have a, sl a better chance at it. Um, yeah, he he took down here and then uh, Bishop B five, and uh, yeah. Very exciting Halloween uh, Gamma game. And like I said, I believe this um, is the way that Eric Schiller suggested, which is why Luke Zhao knew this, because I would bring Eric Schiller to my uh, summer camps. Uh, very uh, well-known author, Eric, Eric Schiller. He wrote more chess books than uh, anybody in history. Um, this was uh, something he suggested in his, I think, Big Book of Bus, maybe? Maybe I even have the, the game. The book over here. Uh, or Unorthodox Chess Open is something. But he, he would he would share. Um, this method is a is a good method against the uh, against the Halloween. Because um, you're you're pinning the knight, right? So you're giving one knight back, but then you get a, a double attack here. Um, of course, then like I said. Uh, white, white, you know, still has a lot of, a lot of uh, ways of, of attacking. Uh, let's see, I can find another one. Waiting for the uh, results. I've got no shortage of fun games to show you guys. I mean, no worries. All right, let me get a fresh analysis board. Maybe I can find one where I win against the Halloween Gamut. Those are a little rarer because somebody would have to use the Halloween against me. Let's see. Ah, uh, oh, I found one in 2019. Okay. Not going to say who the uh, student is. I'm still uh, teaching them. Um... So let's see, 
uh, e4, e5, and I was black in this, so I'm going to go ahead and flip the board. Knight f3, knight c6. It's funny how all these happen in the month of October, though. Um, not by accident. Knight takes e5. And here, um, I, I, I don't use the uh, the Schiller method. Instead, I use a... Um, a what's, what's the name of that, that gambit? It, it's, it's quite similar to... Um, so uh, the Stratford, uh, Stafford Gambit, right? I'm using a, a similar idea here um, where I'm saying, go ahead and spend a couple tempo opening up my attacking lines, right? And yeah, so this is how I like to play the Halloween Gambit. It's a Halloween Gambit declined. I decline the Gambit. Um, and uh, it opens up, opens up my lines of attack, right? Look at my bishop. Look at this bishop. Look at my queen. Right, I got I got a lot of lines of attack um, opened up very very quickly. If you play the uh, Stafford Gambit, then uh, you're familiar with this kind of uh, did thing. Did you get the results? I did not. Oh, I emailed them to you. Oh, okay. I'll finish this game and I'll look at the uh, I'll look at the results. Okay. You put five uh, winners. Five winners. Okay. And I did already post them on the web page too. Oh. Shh. You'll, you'll wreck the surprise. I'll wreck the surprise. All right. I don't think I updated it. Okay. All right. So uh, let's see. White has two pieces to build. Black has two pieces built. White has a pawn center. Um, what do I do? What do I do? Oh, I played knight g4, threatening f2. That's what I did. And uh, queen queen f3, threatening f7. That's what That's what they did. But I get to say check first. And I'm waiting for this uh, silly pop-up to clear so I can see which way they go. Uh, King F1. Again, this is a game against uh, one of my students where I was black against the Halloween. I castle. H3. Let's see how this finishes. Um, I come back. This is a nice little fork, right? Queen takes bishop. Knight takes bishop. D3, kicking my knight around. Um, and then I play F5. So... The idea is their queen sitting in the same file as their king. Let's open the file, allow the rook to uh, cause some problems. And indeed I do. Uh, they can clog it, but then you can attack the pin. Um, king moves there. Rook takes. Let's see what happens here. I'll just go very quickly through the finish of this. Um, form a battery up. Knight attacks my queen. Ooh, queen takes down here, threatening the rook, though. King steps up. Nice, nice defensive move. The rooks are uh, unified. Um, but now queen comes back, going to the diagonal. Oh, yeah, okay. And then the rook, the rooks and the queens are nicely, uh, you know, they're, they're working together, coordinated nicely. But it does not address this threat. And so, boom, that's a check. Wins a knight, says check, and... Then when this goes here, what do I do? Do I take the queen? Nah. I go here. I could have. Um, because then I've got an extra piece in the end game. And I don't think we need to look at whatever moves are remaining. Um, let me go ahead. And uh, yeah, it feels like the Stafford. Yeah, it's a, it's a Halloween Gambit declined. Halloween Gambit declined. All right, let me look at the uh, the winners and announce who won the raffle. So again, um, each tournament you played in, you earned a raffle ticket, and each win, you earned an additional raffle ticket. My wife says it's in my email. I looked in my notepad then. Okay, so... Uh, Congratulations. Here it comes. Winners. Five winners. Mahat AR. You won the raffle. I will be messaging you with some choices for official daily chess musings apparel. Hats, shirts. Uh, Tillman played last night. Did not play tonight, I don't think. Congratulations. Chupa Cat. Chupa Cat, I think, played both nights in one. Sophia Fifi, you won. Congratulations. You also 
get your choice of apparel. And then uh, Thundering Cabin. Nicely done. Those are the uh, five winners. Um, of course, we're all winners in uh, daily chess musings events um, because they're fun and we're part of this community and we're all learning together. I had a lot of fun watching you guys play outstanding chess over these two nights, sharing your chess with a big, big audience on uh, chess.com, chess TV, all this kind of stuff. And um, showing you some uh, some fun Halloween Halloween uh, uh, gambit games to, to finish to finish things out. Uh, I want to wish everybody a uh, happy Halloween. And uh, make sure you check out dailychessmusings.com. And uh, no, top three winners do not necessarily get prizes. Uh, you get a ticket for each win, a raffle ticket. And I called out the uh, raffle winners. Um, and uh, Panda Pooch, you did not win a, uh, you did not win the raffle tonight. But maybe next time we'll do this again. Um, remember, I am Coach Tortoise on Chess.com. You can send me a friend request. I'm a friendly guy. I'll accept it. Coach Tortoise, all one word. Um, join the Daily Chess Musings um, Club on Chess.com, and you can play in a lot of our tournaments. And know when they're when they're going to happen because you'll get a chess.com alert. Uh, follow us the Daily Chess Musings page on uh, Facebook, and uh, find me on Twitter. Um, and uh, with all of that, oh, and YouTube, don't forget about that. I have uh, a lot of um, video content on YouTube. I have thousands of free lessons on DailyChessMusings.com, including on the Halloween Gambit including uh, that Fisher Burger game that I, I referenced uh, with the uh, Fritz Ulsted variation against the uh, fried liver. Um, all, all this kind of stuff you can find on dailychessmusings.com. The Daily Chess Musings uh, YouTube channel has tons of great video content. This video will be reposted there as soon as I sign off tonight. Um, so make sure you're uh, uh, following us on um, YouTube as well. Especially because I will be having, somebody mentioned uh, Rook and Pawn Endgames, um, making them nervous. I'm going to be uh, releasing a bunch of uh, YouTube shorts very soon on Endgames. And uh, you're, going to, uh, you're going to thoroughly enjoy that. Um, I'm putting all my, uh, all my Endgame uh, uh, lessons that I've taught over the years um, that get progressively... You, you, uh, start at the end and then work your way back. Um, and uh, I'm I'm getting all those edited and uh, we'll be posting uh, YouTube shorts almost daily um, with uh, with very very uh, well thought out end game lessons. Um, also uh, check out the Master Chess Theater on YouTube. I won an award for my. Um, Depiction of the famous Opera House game, Paul Morphy versus the Duke of Brunswick and the Count of Ice Award. I won. I won a uh, award voted on by my peers. Best, uh, best uh, um, chess, chess educational lesson. And uh, um, Blitz Wizard, are you gonna be uh, streaming? Can I can I do a, a raid for you, my friend? How about you go ahead and uh, get your stream going, and I'll I'll send them um, in a raid. How do I do that again? trying to see. I think it's just a, a raid is where um, everybody, I send all my viewers over to uh, to watch um, to watch a different uh, um, so raid slash is it, is it raid? How, how do I do a raid? I'm trying to remember. How can I always forget this? Where's my um, who can who can tell me how? Oh, he's not streaming, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, maybe we, we won't do a raid tonight. Um, but in the future, we certainly will. And uh, you will be seeing me uh, much more often. Um, so make sure you remember to follow uh, us on uh, Twitch. And uh, that way you get alerts when I'm, uh, when I'm live. But uh, I think I'm going to be doing uh, uh, Chess TV on Chess.com 
more, more often. Once again, my name is Chris Torres. Uh, this is Daily Chess Musings, and I will see you again next time. So long, everybody. <laughs>